Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. For the past 7 weeks, we have been posting weekly interview videos on the Dao Yi YouTube channel along with articles on the Dao Yi blog. Link to the Dao Yi Talks Expert Series playlist is in the description. On behalf of the entire Dao Yi team, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to all the guests who have contributed their knowledge and experience with the community so far and we are looking forward to many more. So, if you are interested in interviewing with Dao Yi or know someone who would make a great interview guest, please let us know. Again, Dao Yi is meant to serve the internal style community by introducing and connecting other teachers and experts. Dao Yi has nothing to do with my own channel. That was all in terms of announcements. Today, we will talk about Chang Quan Duan Da, an ancient yet commonly misunderstood martial art term. I will introduce Chang Quan Duan Da in a series of three videos, one video per style, with today's focus would be in Xing Yi. But first, let's warm up with the Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's sentence is Xi Yan Zi Ran, the first sentence of chapter 23 of the Dao De Jing. In chapter 17, Lao Zi criticized the governing method applied by not following the Wu Wei or non-action principle. In the 23rd chapter, Lao Zi introduced his philosophical concept based on the 17th chapter. So, in the 23rd chapter, Lao Zi used some natural phenomena to express the importance of following Taoist principles by differentiating between the consequences of two opposite approaches to dealing with social and political issues. The first sentence, Xi Yan Zi Ran, reflects the core of this chapter. Xi means reticence, Yan means speech, talking, Zi Ran means natural way, spontaneity. Put together, this sentence means reticence in speech lead to spontaneity. In other words, Abstaining from speech mark him who is obeying the spontaneity of his nature. Then Lao Zi gave an example to justify this statement by saying, quote, Gu piao feng bu zhong zhao, zhou yu bu zhong ri, shu wei ci zhe tian di, end quote. Translation, a violent wind does not last for a whole morning. A sudden rain does not last for the whole day. Who is it that produces these two phenomena, heaven and earth? End the translation. So, he used natural phenomena to indicate the concept of resistance is the way of nature. Then he said the translated quote. If even heaven and earth cannot go on forever, much less can man, and translated the code. Then Lao Zi listed three cause and effect examples by saying, quote, Gu chong shi yu dao zhe tong yu dao, de zhe tong yu de, shi zhe tong yu shi, end quote. Translation, if you accord with the Dao, you become one with it. If you accord with the virtue, you become one with it. If you accord with the loss, you become one with it. End translation. Lao Tzu further explained the reasons behind these three situations by saying translated code. If you open yourself to the Tao, the Tao will eagerly welcome you. If you open yourself to virtue, Virtue will become a part of you. If you open yourself to loss, 
the lost are glad to see you and translated code. In the end, Lao Tzu concluded this chapter by saying two sentences, quote, Xin bu zu yan, you bu xin yan, end quote. Translation, he who does not trust enough will not be trusted, end translation. In other words, failure of faith on your part creates faithlessness on the part of others. In Shudao practice, this whole chapter tells us how to deal with different energetic experiences in different stages. In the energy refinement process, there are many specific energetic experiences that will happen depending on what type of practice a practitioner focuses on. Some of them are very strong, but most of them are very subtle. According to the Tao's principle, any strong energetic phenomenon is just temporary, since the overall Taoist practice follows the static approach. As Lao Tzu said at the beginning of this chapter, Xi Yan Zi Ran, Taoists follow the non action approach, and non action is the nature of Tao. It tells us that in Xiu Dao practice, maintaining a static state and letting energy rise naturally is the correct method in the energy refinement process. Any action intended to artificially push or accelerate the energy circulation is not the Taoist method. So, Lao Tzu used the term Tao and De in this chapter to express the relationship between energy and energetic experience. In other words, what it is and what it does. It is a profound concept in Xiu Dao practice, and I will elaborate more in the future. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, Chang Quan Duan Da Ying Xing Yi. Topics covered in today's video include first, history of Chang Quan Duan Da, second, meaning of Chang Quan Duan Da, third, importance of understanding Chang Quan Duan Da, fourth, how to practice Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi. Fifth, principles of Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi. Sixth, misperception of Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi. Seventh, demonstration and eighth, take aways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, history of Chang Quan Duan Da. The term Chang Quan Duan Da consists of four words. Chang means long, Quan means fist, Duan means short, Da means strike, fight. Put together, Chang Quan Duan Da means long fist and short strike. In Chinese martial arts, Quan or fist and Da or strike, fight means the same. In the Chinese language, when writing something in a poetic way, very often people try not to repeat a word in a sentence in order to show a variety of expressions. So, this term would carry the same meaning when written as Chang Quan Duan Quan or Chang Da Duan Da. But for linguistic aesthetics, it was written as Chang Quan Duan Da. By the way, very often people encounter this term in the community. It is the big confusing since these first two sentences, Chang Quan or Long Fist, also form the name of a popular style of martial art. Even more interesting, Chang Quan or Long Fist is a new style that was created in the late 1950s. The movements of Long Fist were based on Cha Quan, Hua Quan, Pao Quan, Hong Quan, Tan Tui, and so on. 
that style was created for wushu competition purposes. Please be careful here. Cha Quan, Hua Quan, Pao Quan, Hong Quan, Tan Tui are traditional styles, but Chang Quan, the new style created in the 1950s, is a result of modern wushu practice. So, even though a style such as Chang Quan was created based on traditional styles, there is no traditional Chang Quan. By the way, I'm not saying that Chang Quan, the newly created style, is not good. On the contrary, it can provide a lot of benefits to a practitioner if practiced well. In other words, Modern wushu practice can also provide many benefits, such as flexibility, cardio function improvement, and the wushu demonstration or entertainment, such as the fancy movements in many kung fu movies. Today, most Chinese martial arts styles have both a traditional version and a wushu version. For example, well, there are modern wushu styles of Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Bagua today. Their traditional versions have been in continuous existence for centuries up to this day. Again, I'm not against the modern wushu practice. I'm only against the wushu practice pretending to be traditional practice. Authenticity is important. To summarize, the first two words, Chang Quan or Long Fist, have nothing to do with the modern Wushu style Chang Quan. They use the same characters but not mean the same. After understanding the meaning of this term, especially the differentiation between Chang Quan Duan Da, the concept, and Chang Quan, the modern Wushu style, let's now talk about the history of the term Chang Quan Duan Da. General Qi Ji Guang's work, Ji Xiao Xin Shu, was the first martial document to mention the term Chang Quan. For example, in the book, Qi Ji Guang said, quote, Song Tai Zu Yu, San Shi Er Shi Chang Quan, end quote. Translation Song Tai Zu has 32 posters Chang Quan, end translation. By the way, Song Tai Zu or Emperor Tai Zu of Song, the first emperor of the Song dynasty, who was in power more than a thousand years ago, is considered the founder of the famous 32 poster Chang Quan or Long Fist. Some other documents, such as Quan Jing Chuan Fa Bei Yao or Collection of Martial Practice and the Classics, also used the term Chang Quan and Duan Da in writing. More interestingly, this term has been used in Tai Chi classics as well. For example, Tai Chi was called Tai Chi Lang Fist or Tai Chi Chang Quan. So, what is the meaning of Chang Quan? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Meaning of Chang Quan Duan Da. I have mentioned many times in prior videos that, very often, the meaning of a martial art term changes with time. To fully understand the term, we have to know its context and background in history, or else misunderstandings and misperceptions will definitely occur. Perfect example of this phenomenon is today's term. Chang Quan Duan Da. This term has at least three meanings depending on the context. Let me explain. First, the length of a routine. In the ancient times, a style with a lot of movements would be called Long Fist or Chang Quan. For example, Chen style Tai Chi was called Tai Chi Long Fist or Tai Chi Chang Quan. Shaolin Chang Quan or Shaolin Long Fist, since some version of this routine has 108 movements. 
太祖长权 or long feast created by the first emperor of the Song had 32 posters. At the same time, if a routine had only a few or just a simple movement without a routine, then it would be called Duan Da. For example, Mian Zhang Quan, a style mainly focused on single movements or short combinations of single movements, is a Duan Da or short strike or short fight. So, this classification method is based on the length of a routine. In other words, fewer movements would be called Duan Da, while a long routine would be called Chang Quan. Second, different ways to hold a posture. In the traditional system, one way to name different postures was in terms of the distance between the hand and the body. For example, if a hand extended far from the body, then this hand posture was called Chang Quan Shou or Long Faced Hand, while the posture of a hand stays close to the body was called Duan Da Shou or Short Strike Hand. In practice, Long Faced Hand changes to Short Strike Hand and vice versa, resulting in different martial movements. So, that was the old way to name a hand posture. 3. The way to deal with an attack The previous ways of naming a posture based on how it was had used a static approach. Likewise, there is also a dynamic approach to differentiate between a long fist and a short strike. When the opponent attack is from afar, then long fist will be applied to deal with this type of attack. Likewise, when the opponent's attack is very close, a short strike will be applied to deal with this type of attack. This concept has been recorded in many ancient martial training documents such as Wu Bian or Martial Collection written by Tang Shunzhi in the Ming Dynasty. By the way, Check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 58, Gang Luo Dian in Tai Chi, in which I have introduced Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian, an ancient concept recorded in Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu or the Chang Family Martial Training Manual. Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian translates to one transferring energy. It should be flexible and relaxed while the structure and the power should be solid and strong when reaching the striking point. End translation. Actually, the long fist is used to describe Rou Guo Qi, while the short strike is used to describe Gang Luo Dian. Link to this video is in the description. So, this method uses a dynamic approach to differentiate between two ways of dealing with an attack. So, Chang Quan Duan Da has at least three meanings of this simple term depending on the context. The first is about the naming method of a routine or its single movements. The second is about the naming method of the posture. The third and final for today is the dynamic approach that focuses on martial action. However, if we analyze all the three, the third meaning based on the dynamic approach actually reflects the spirit of a martial movement in terms of its martial function more than the others. This is the reason why the meaning of a Chang Quan Duan Da nowadays is explained mostly in this way. So, why is it important to understand the meaning of a Chang Quan Duan Da, especially the third meaning? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Importance of Understanding Chang Quan Duan Da. As mentioned in Topic 2 moments ago, 
The third meaning is the most practical one in terms of explaining martial training. So, I will explain it further based on this aspect. To understand the third meaning better, let's use two terms to describe two approaches used in combat. The two terms are Chang Quan Duan Da Fa, or Long Fist Fighting Method, and Duan Quan Da Fa, or Short Strike Fighting Method. Now, the question becomes between Long Fist Fighting Method and Short Strike Fighting Method, which one is more effective in martial application? Let me answer it here. The answer is very simple. The short strike method is more effective than the long fist fighting method. Some ancient martial training documents, such as Qian Jin Mi Jue Wen Da Ge Jue, or Martial Proverb Questions and Answer, say, quote, Chang Lai Duan Jie Yi Ru Shen, Ru Shen Die Bo Hao Jing Ren, end quote. Translation it is easier to enter the opponent's structure by intercepting the incoming long fist with short strike. Entering the opponent's structure can strike the opponent down, which surprises the opponent. End translation. In other words, an opponent can be defeated more easily when struck by entering his area, the space close to his body which is very hard to achieve through the long fist fighting method. That was just an example we can see the benefit of the short strike method compared to the long fist one. Martial art practice is to achieve an optimal effect by choosing the most suitable option among many possible alternatives. Understanding Chang Quan Duan Da will help you make those choices. Before ending this section, I'd like to emphasize the concept of Chang Quan Duan Da He Yi, or the integration of a long fist and short strike as one. If we analyze Chinese internal styles in terms of their martial application, it is impossible to classify a style as a long fist one or a short strike one, since these two methods are applied in all three styles. In other words, a well-trained practitioner should be able to naturally and subconsciously apply each method. However, it is worth noting that the short strike method is a more challenging one compared to the long fist one. So, even though there exists the concept of integration of the long fist and the short strike, the short strike method requires much more practice compared to long fist. So, how should you actually practice the long fist short strike in Xing Yi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4 How to practice Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi? A well-developed style like Xing Yi has practiced in terms of its movements and training method to achieve the long fist and short strike method. But first, a practitioner has to identify movements for training long fist or short fist methods. Then, a practitioner has to also know how to train the long fist and the short strike in martial application training. They are two different topics and should not be confused. Let me explain them one by one. Now, let's talk about the first one. In Xing Yi, due to the constant development contributed by different generations of practitioners, especially the second and the third generation of disciples, movements aiming to practice the long face and the short strike have been well structured in any Xing Yi branch. It may give an impression that Xing Yi is a long fist oriented style, but in reality, all the movements, especially many animal movements, are actually designed for short range combat 
or the short strike. In any Xin Yi branch, one key principle of practice is the Shu Zhan or contracting and extending motion, which is the foundation for long fist and short strike. Some practices, such as monkey form, bear form, tiger form, and many movements in the eight word practice or Ba Zi Gong, are perfect for developing short strike oriented martial skills. So, being able to identify which movements and forms are most suitable to develop long fist or short strike oriented martial skills is important. Having identified the movements according to the long fist and the short strike criteria, in the next step, the objective is to train different martial skills based on these two approaches. Fortunately, Xing Yi is a Fa Jin or power release oriented style, which means that Xing Yi practice aims to develop a powerful martial energy, which is the foundation for any martial skill. So, developing short range and long range martial energy and applying them to different situations is the objective of that step. Traditionally, that step is done through Wei Shou or Feed the Hand, a term used to describe a situation in which teachers help students understand and practice martial application based on form and energy through direct body contact. This is an important step which should not be neglected for developing an advanced level of Xing Yi practice. To summarize, there are two steps involved in practicing long fist and short strike in Xing Yi. First, identify movements more suitable to practice each method. Then, practice each movement with Fa Jin in order to generate Xing Yi martial energy and apply them to a martial application. This video introduced a key topic. Teaching specific movements is beyond the scope of this video, so let's move on to the next topic in which I will introduce a couple of key principles to practice Chang Quan Duan Da. Topic 5 Principle of Chang Quan Duan Da In today's video, I'd like to introduce one principle each for the long fist and short strike method. They are Fang Chang Ji Yuan for the long fist method and Jie Shou Ru Shen for the short strike method. Let me explain one by one. First, Fang Chang Ji Yuan. Fang means release. Chang means long, Ji means strike, Yuan means Fang. Put together, Fang Chang Ji Yuan means to extend and strike further. It is the term used in many long fist oriented styles such as Tong Bei, Shaolin, uh, Cha Quan, and so on, which represent a concept in martial training that limbs should extend further in order to strike an opponent in a long range. Xing Yi applies this concept as well. So, in practice, one should deliberately practice the long range strike in order to train the long fist oriented method. Second, Jie Shou Ru Shen. Jie means reach or intersect. Shou means hand or a technique, Ru means enter, Shen means body. Put together, Jie Shou Ru Shen means when you reach the hands of the opponent, you should enter the close range of the opponents. In other words, the practitioner's body moves into the opponent's space, which is the typical action to take in order to apply the short strike method. Again, this method is more practical in much application but needs a lot of practice, or else the practitioner will put himself in a vulnerable situation.
Those were two key principles for the practice of uh, Chang Quan Duan Da. Now let me debunk a common misperception in the next topic. Topic sixth, misperception of uh, Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi. The meaning of uh, Chang Quan Duan Da has changed many times in history, so it is quite normal for misperceptions to occur. For example. Many people perceive Xing Yi to be a long face method oriented style. This is the misperception, let me debunk it. Yes, Xing Yi style, especially the Hebei style Xing Yi, emphasized the opening and extending motion in practice. However, that does not make Xing Yi a long faced method style. Instead, Xing Yi is more of a short strike method oriented style. The opening and extending motion in training is for Fa Jin and Shen Fa or power release and body method training purposes. Long fist and short strikes are aspects of martial application and do not merely refer to the appearance of the form or movement. In the Tianjin Xing Yi community, there is an old popular proverb describing the Xing Yi fighting characteristics Da Ren Ru Qin Zui, or fighting is like kissing. You cannot kiss someone at a distance. Xing Yi emphasizes the close range of combat training, and it is actually a more short strike method oriented style. So, Working on short range power training is a good path to reach an advanced level in Xing Yi. Now, let me demonstrate a single exercise that integrates both long fist and short strike method for Fa Jin training in the next topic. Topic 7 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a long and short power in Xing Yi. These are two movements. First movement is the long face method from the rooster form. The second movement is the short strike method of the bare elbow movements. We can practice this combination as the single movement exercise in training. Okay, you can start from slow motion from here. One, two, then one. Now with the force. Topic 8 Take Aways. First, history of Chang Chuan Duan Da. This term has been used in ancient military training manuals to indicate the routine practice as well as some other specific meanings depending on its context. Second, meaning of Chang Quan Duan Da. Chang Quan Duan Da has at least three meanings depending on the context. Its meaning based on the dynamic approach actually reflects the spirit of the martial movement in terms of its martial function more than the others. 3. Importance of understanding Chang Quan Duan Da. A well-trained practitioner should be able to naturally and subconsciously apply each method, which makes it important to understand Chang Quan Duan Da. 4. How to practice Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi First, identify movements more suitable to practice each method. Then, practice each movement with Fa Jin in order to generate Xing Yi martial energy and apply them to a martial application. Fifth, principles of Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi. Fang Chang Ji Yuan, extend and strike further. Jie Shou Ru Shen, when you reach the hands of your opponents, you should enter the close range of the opponents. Sixth, misperception of Chang Quan Duan Da in Xing Yi. Many people perceive Xing Yi to be a long face method oriented style. That is the misperception. Xing Yi emphasizes the close range of combat training, and it is actually a more short strike method oriented style. 
make sure to check out the demonstration section for a more visual idea of Changquan Duan Da training in Xingyi practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.